Today, I'm gonna to show you five custom GPTs that you can get free access to. And these are basically free AI SaaS SEO tools that you can get free access to. You can use them for all sorts of things. I'm gonna show you some of the most exciting use cases. I'm gonna share all the links with you so you can get instant access today. And I'm gonna guide you through each one, plus how to build your own in just a few minutes. So this is absolutely mind blowing. It's a brand new feature that's come out from ChatGPT this week. Can't wait to show you. Let's get into it. So there's many use cases to chat GPT right now. And obviously you can talk about tomato and ketchup smoothies like you can see here in my chat history. But today we're going to focus on custom GPTs. Now, these are basically like custom made chat GPT that you can save, you can pin, you can share with people, you can give to your team, etc. And then they can use them for different SEO tasks in your business. Now, the reason that this is so powerful is because a lot of AI tools use API, right? Whereas you can train a custom GPT inside ChatGPT right here. You just click create a GPT and then you can customize a version of ChatGPT for specific things. And you can bookmark these, you can save them for later. Like I say, you can share them with your team. I'm gonna share with some of my favorite ones with you today. And then we can build out some new ones. Now, why would you do this? Because it saves you time. Why would it save you time? Because essentially you have a tool for this and a tool for that, etc. And then you can just bookmark them, save them, and come back to them when you want. It's kind of like AI PRM actually did before, if you saw that, where they basically had a marketplace for different chat GPT prompts, except you can build them yourself. It comes in a nicer wrapper. And if people actually use your tool and you share it with the internet, then chat GPT are planning to pay you. Now, I don't think you're going to make a lot of money doing this, but it's interesting to just see what's possible and test the boundaries, right? And all of the tools I'm going to make today will share with you. So I'm excited to try it. So if you saw my video yesterday, you saw we actually created this SEO outline creator, but now we're going to create a new GPT based on some of my favorite prompts right here. So for example, creating topical maps, we can create a custom GPT for topical maps. And this time around, I'm actually going to use the create section right here. Previously, I used the configure section and you can plug in your custom instructions like so. Today, I want to try the create section and just see what happens when you actually give it a bit of information. Now, you might also say, what is a topical map and why is it useful for SEO? So basically it's a game plan that connects all the stuff you have on your website about a certain topic. And it matters because basically, if you cover every single thing a website can cover on a particular topic, then you get more authority. And if you look like an authority to Google, then you get more SEO traffic. What does a topical map look like? It looks something like this, where you have your main topics. I usually build out about 30 of them, you can see, the English translation there, if you don't speak French. And then for each topic, you can see that we have keywords around each topic, right? So each of these keywords would be a separate page within your topic. And I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try and attempt to create a topical map tool for you right now. Now I've seen SEO agencies charge like eight to $10,000 for this. You can just do it for free with the tool I'm about to make you if it works. So let's see, I'm going to say, right, create a topical maps tool for generating SEO topical maps, use two step prompt approach below. And there's basically two steps to this, right? Part one is to get the semantically relevant and unique topics. And then part two is to find the keywords for each of those topics. So I'm just going to give you the prompts and say, create a topical maps tool. We'll see what happens now. It's asking me for the name. So I'll call it SEO topical map maker. Also it generates an image for the topical map. that looks like this. It's not that relevant. And then it asks you to approve it. So we're going to say, make it more like a hierarchical SEO website structure icon. And it's generating the image using DALI 3, if we zoom in right here. So you don't even need to generate the image yourself. It's a very lazy way of creating SEO tools. When you use a chat to create the tool, you're going to customize it in ways that you probably didn't think about before. So normally if you just went into configure and then added the custom instructions that way, you're just going to plug in the instructions but you're not going to be thinking about, say, the tone of language when people interact with your tool. Whereas with GPT Builder, it makes it a bit more custom. And by the way, this topical map method is not something I've come up with. It's actually uh, Corey Tugberg who uses this method. Many of my Chiang Mai SEO this week actually would recommend checking out his channel. You can see his channel right there. Now we're filling in some boring details. This is not very glamorous, so I won't film the whole thing. You might also ask, okay, but how do you topical maps help your site. So basically topical maps make sure that you cover a topic inside and out, right? And that, number one, that makes it easy to find keywords and content ideas, easy to plan out your whole, whole site, especially if you're starting from scratch and all your content basically links together, which seems more relevant to Google. 
especially semantically relevant, and that helps you build your authority. Plus, it just makes sense from the user experience too. And so now you've got the creator on the left-hand side, and you've got the actual tool on the right-hand side. So if you're creating your own SEO tools, like this, your own custom GPTs, and you don't like the output, then you can change the inputs over here. And so now what I've done is I've actually changed the conversation starters. So I said change conversation starters so that you ask me for the details from prompt one first, which is this one, and then ask me for the details to fill out prompt two here. Okay. So it's going to say, tell me your niche in your language, and I'll create a table of 30 topics. So let's say our niche is spaghetti. In case anyone's thinking of delving into the spaghetti niche, very lucrative. And um, we'll say our language is Italian. And you can do this for English as well. It doesn't have to be for any particular language. And now it's creating the main topics that we can then ask ChatGPT to build out the keywords for in each section. So for your topical map, this is the main category. And then you would have 30 different pages underneath that based on the topical map that comes back. And so from here, if I say now create the topical map for each topic, it will select one of the topics from the list and generate 30 variations, each with a different search intent. So for example, it's taken spaghetti carbonara, which is this main topic right here. And then it's generating the subtopics underneath. So for example, recipes, ingredients, cooking techniques, the history of carbonara, we've all wanted to know, let's be honest. And then you've got your first category ready for your new website. Now this is just one category and then you do that for each category. But if you don't want to do it that way, then you could also just say, create a topical map for all the topics and it will give you a topical map. So this is the main category. And then it's got about three pages underneath each category, right? So these are the subtopics. So if you just want to do it all in one, then you'll get a smaller topical map, but then you'll get three or four different topics under each category, like so. And that's our topical map generator. Happy days. Now, what I want to say here is I created that in about 10 minutes. So none of these tools are going to be perfect. Anyone who tells you a custom GPT is perfect. It's probably pulling the wool over your eyes and I just want to be transparent here. But you can see how easy it is to use. It has a lot of potential and it works, right? So it did give us the 30 topics that we want. And then it's also given us the subcategories for each topic so that we can build out our topical map. And then eventually you're going to build out something like this, where you have 30 subtopics for each main topic. And that's basically it. You can base it into a spreadsheet or do whatever you want with it. So I'm going to take the link and I will share all of this with you, all the tools that I make today inside my free course. You can get it. Links in the comments in the description. Let's move on to the next one. I'll also share with you some of the other cool custom GPTs that I've seen so far that look really exciting. So we'll take a look at some of those today as well. Next up, what I want to try doing is basically taking all of the prompts that I have right here and training a GPT on those simply because one of the questions I get all the time is what's the best prompt for this or that, etc. So I want to share with you all of my favorite prompts that I've learned this year and condense basically 12 months of work into one little chat GPT. So what you can actually do, I believe, is you can upload in the knowledge section right here under configure all of your prompts. Because ChatGPT4 Turbo has so many tokens, I think it's about 128,000 tokens compared to before where it could only handle 8,000 tokens. Basically, you can upload like whole books into this section right here and it'll be able to handle the knowledge and refer back to it. And if you enable code interpreter over here, you can analyze the data, work with the files you uploaded, and even do some maths. So we'll call this one Julian Goldie GPT. And this is basically just my favorite tools and prompts. And this way as well, you don't need to hire me for consultations anymore. I've basically made myself redundant. So I'm going to attach that. And then what I'm also going to do is I will take my book, Link Building Mastery, which is a book I wrote a few years ago about how to build links and that sort of thing. And I'm going to plug that into chat GPT as well. I don't know if it can handle that much tokens and that much context, but there's only one way to find out. So we're going to hit save like so. And one thing to note here, right? Once you've actually published your tool, you can actually go back and edit it like that. So if you just go back to explore over here and then you can edit your tool or you can delete it if you want to, we'll click edit. 
And then we can go back to the configure and plug in any custom instructions that we want. And what I'm actually going to do is take the details that I've trained FastBots on, which is another chatbot tool. And I'm just going to plug them into GPT to save myself time. Plus it's trained on my actual data. Now I wonder as well, whether this is going to be embeddable on websites in the future, right? So whether you can just take a chatbot like this and then upload it to your website, I think that's probably going to come at some point. And what you also notice here is that there's a character limit on the instructions, right? So if you're creating these GPTs, there is a character limit on how much content you can give inside the instruction section. So for example, if we ask it how to build backlinks, it will recommend some of my favorite techniques. And it also refers people to my link building portal where people can just order backlinks directly on there. And it gives them a coupon code for 10% off. So what's interesting about this is, let's say you're creating your own chat GPT tools and then they become discoverable on chat GPT or GPT store. Well, the interesting thing about that is not only will potentially open AI pay you for doing that, but also you can turn it into a kind of sales machine where I don't know 100%, but let's say you create a tool on finding the best products on Amazon, right? And then people use that tool, but it also sends people affiliate links and that sort of thing. And then you make money out of the tool, but you also make money from OpenAI for people using it. It's kind of interesting. Let's ask it, what's your favorite SEO tools? And then it gives customized instructions based on what's worked for me. So for example, AI content creation, SEO tools, SEMrush, Content optimization with NeuronWriter, website hosting. So WPX and Easy Blog Networks, these are two SEO tools I use. It's also got the indexing services I use, the tools I use for email, internal linking, etc., and even text expanders, which is quite interesting. And then you can change conversation starters. So let's say, for example, you want people to book a call with you. You know, for example, for my agency, this is one of the most common questions we get. And if you don't get the response you want, for example, like here, I wasn't that impressed. You can just change the custom instructions. So for example, if people want to call, send them directly to this link, and then you can tweak it like that. All right. So for example, if people ask to book a call with me now, well, they get sent to the strategy session page right here, or they can use the email address here. I think this is really powerful for personal brands. And if you do like basic customer service and you're answering the same questions all the time, well, this is a really powerful tool. But also it's useful for anyone interested in SEO because for example, if I say, right, how can I get backlinks to my AI site? I tend to get that question every single day. And then it gives people a bunch of ideas right here. With the world that we're living in right now, our digital avatars are becoming more powerful than our actual offline avatar. That makes sense. So for me, for example, a lot more people interact with my digital avatar than they do with me offline. So if you can create better digital avatars of yourself, that is the world we're living in. We're basically in the matrix right now. Then this is one way of doing it so that people can interact with you digitally in a more personalized way, especially if you're a website owner or an agency owner, etc. Now let's see if it can retrieve the information from the 50 chat GPT SEO prompts I've given it. So I've asked the tool, what are your best chat GPT SEO prompts? Let's see what it does. So it's searching the knowledge right there. So it's retrieving the knowledge from the document I uploaded previously which is this one right here. Let's see what it does. And then based on the document that I've given it, 50 AI SEO prompts, it's given some of the best prompts from that list. So for example, creating your SEO bookmarklets. And if you ask it for the actual prompts, then it will give you the copy and pasteable prompts that you can just plug into ChatGPT. Pretty crazy. So it's not bad at all. It's even got my Twitter prompts right here as well. Now she saw that Caitlin Hathaway created a Google's review system inside ChatGPT. So shout out to her, would recommend checking this out. What you can do with this is basically take your review content, you know, for example, like the top 10 best binoculars for birds and then plug it straight into here. So let's try, and I'm not sure if this works, but let's try analyzing a URL. So I'm gonna say analyze the URL right here. And this is based on the official review and search quality guidelines from Google. And you can not just analyze the URL, but you can also analyze two different URLs and compare them. So we're going to take a URL from my website and let's plug that into ChatGPT and see what it does. And you see it's browsing with Bing. So it's checking the live URL from Bing, visiting cheaperbirds.com, which is the URL I gave. And then it gives you a kind of critique. It's like, right, 
here's the positives and also here's what to improve. And these are actionable ways you can improve your URL. So that was incredibly easy. You just take your URL and plug it in. Pretty cool. And this is all based on Google's official guidelines. So it's not just like sticking its finger in the air if you're just guessing for you or hallucinating it. And one of the important things that I've seen here actually is visual and audio evidence, right? So for example, the article that I plugged in, this one is created with ChatGPT and it actually doesn't have any visual audio evidence that the products in the review have been used. So that's quite a compelling area of improvement that's genuinely actionable, right? Now, if you're building your own SEO tools using this process, then what you'll notice on the left over here is that they're kind of bookmarked in your sidebar, right? So you can easily just jump back to the topical map creator or Julian Goldie GPT or the SEO outline creator, and it's all bookmarked there and ready to go, which is pretty cool. So just to recap, we've done the topical maps generator like so. We've got Julian Goldie GPT. We've covered the high quality review analyzer. Next up, we're going to review this tool by Christy Hines, which is the web quality analyzer. And basically this evaluates websites for EEAT. So experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. Not easy to pronounce all those words in one go. And one thing I want to note here is that ChatGPT actually gives you this notification if you hover over the eye right here that says people can't view your chats, right? So if you use my tool, for example, I can't view your chats, which is quite interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to check this website's e and see what happens next. And I think this will be trained on Google's guidelines again on EEAT. So this is part of the quality rater guidelines. You can check it out on the website. So now you can use this as kind of tool to evaluate and audit your site in terms of EEAT and how well it performs. So it asks for the specific URL or name of the website you're interested in. I'm going to plug my website right here and see how it performs. And now it's browsing with Bing, searching the website visiting my website and you can see this progress bar here as it performs more and more searches around the website. It's also looking at scamadvisor.com. Interesting. Let's see what happens. So it's basically analyzing my website in terms of experience. So I've got various articles around certain topics. Then it's taken one of my testimonials. And then in terms of trustworthiness, it actually uses scam advisor, which checks the website's legitimacy and safety. And you can see based on 40 facts found online, Julian Goldie is likely to be legit and safe for consumers to access. Happy days. But we've got a few improvements to make here, as you can see. And then the final one, and I'll show you this quickly because I covered it in a video yesterday. If you want to see the details on that, check this out right here. But basically, this is my SEO outline creator. So if we click what keywords you want an outline for, then we'll take a page that I'm ranking first for already. So for example, yellow bird meaning, plug that in. It's going to browse Bing, search for the article, search for the keyword, visit some of the competitors. And basically like a lot of SEO tools out there, it's going to scrape the internet, look at the top 10 ranking results and come back to you with an outline for your article. So that it's structured in a way that you know Google already likes simply because this is based on your competitor's data. And then it's coming back to us with the outline right here, along with the FAQs, NLP keywords, the word count for each section, what headings to include that are keyword optimized. So for example, it's got the FAQ section here with the questions underneath. Then it's got the LSI and NLP keywords. It's also got some relevant resources you can link out to and basically everything you would get normally with an SEO tool. So whether you're using other people's tools or whether you're creating your own on ChatGPT, number one, it's extremely easy. Number two, you can make them very tailored to the tasks that you want and they're all saved and bookmarked there, which is going to save you time because you can just come back to them and they're all in one place rather than log it in here, log it in there, etc. And then additionally, this is like the easiest way I know of creating your own SaaS tools, right? So for example, I wouldn't even know where to start if I wanted to create an SEO tool around topical maps, but I can easily build it on ChatGPT, which is quite interesting. And basically, even if you don't code, you can create your own SaaS tools or your own SEO tools in a few minutes, right? So that's pretty much it. Five custom GPTs for SEOs. So you've got the topical maps link there, Julian Goldie GPT, the high quality review analyzer, the web quality analyst, and the SEO outline creator. Really powerful and easy to set up. So I want to answer some questions from the video yesterday. One of the first questions I got asked was, which is better, custom chat GPT or Playground? So I would say that outputs from Playground 
are actually still better than ChatGPT right now. However, this is in beta and it's only going to improve. And what I would say as well is with custom GPTs, like the tool I've created right here, you don't need to pay for API usage, right? And it can still generate exactly what you need. Whereas if you're using Playground, you're going to spend money on the API usage and it's going to cost you more money in the long run. So this is a lot cheaper. Plus these tools are only going to get better as you get better prompting. The thing that blows my mind with all of this is like, I would be absolutely terrified if I had an AI tool that was basically a wrapper for the chat GPT API. And that's simply because number one, it's very easy for non-coders to create tools. Number two, people are probably going to prefer to use tools inside chat GPT rather than externally. And number three, even if you build your own tool inside the custom GPT store, well, it could be very easily emulated by someone else or by OpenAI themselves. So it's kind of a scary time for tool creators, but it's good for non-coders who didn't plan to create a tool anyway. One of the other questions I got was like, browsing always ends up showing an error. It never completes. So as you can see here, it's analyzing and using Bing browsing, and it doesn't seem to be an issue. It does take a little while, and I simply think that's because this is a beta version that's just come out this week and there's going to be a lot of people using it. It seems to be working as you can see, it's finished analyzing right there. And then it's generating the outline as you can see. It's just a bit slower than it would be normally because this is a brand new feature. And then I've actually updated this tool so that when you generate an outline and it's got all the external URLs and the LSI keywords and the whole article right here, it says, would you like me to write part one of the article? Now, the reason that we're going to write part one first is because the output of ChatGPT, if you write the whole article at once, it's going to be like 500 words maximum. You don't want a 500 word article. You want something a bit longer. And that's why you want to generate part one first and then part two second. And if you're wondering, okay, does that actually work? So you can see this video right here where I actually use the same process and this content ranked within five hours. I know some people said like, just wait, or this isn't going to rank anymore. So if we check the keyword a few days later, Let's have a look on a new incognito. You can see it's still ranking on the first page right there. So the content ranks and it sticks in its rankings as well for now. Anyway, let's see. And so we've generated the content here. Like I say, it's absolutely not going to be perfect, but it started writing part one now. Here's the content. It's giving you the word count for each section. And then it said, would you like me to write part two? If you hit yes, it will write part two for you as well. I don't think it's perfect, but it's getting there. So I'm going to put these links inside my free AI SEO tool section right here. We'll click add a lesson. This will be called custom GPTs for SEO. The links are in the description right there. We're going to make that public. And there you go. Now, if you want to get access to my free chat GPT SEO course, which includes nearly a hundred SEO videos and tutorials and templates, etc., then feel free to get that links in the comments completely free. Check it out if you want. And if you do want to book in a call about how to get more leads, traffic and sales for your website, feel free to book in a call here. Links in the comments in the description. We'll give you an SEO domination plan. We'll answer any questions that you have and you'll discover the best link building strategies for your website. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.